I'm Dr. Sri. I'm a primary care sports medicine doctor practicing in the United States. I also have a background in exercise physiology. In this video, I'm going to address a popular topic that has been circulating in social media. The soleus push-ups and its potential effects on diabetes. Without further ado, let's get started. So now first, let's talk about the soleus muscle. The soleus muscle is a key component of the calf muscles. So they are responsible for the plantar flexion of the ankle. So basically this motion here. So this is almost similar to pressing down on a gas pedal. So this motion is also achieved by two other muscles in the calf, basically the medial and the lateral gastrocnemius. However, the soleus has a high endurance capacity than those of the gastrocnemius muscles. So the gastroc muscles are more for explosive movements such as jumping and running. How we can think of soleus as a more like a postural muscle that can be relied upon for long periods of activity. So one good example that I can provide you is standing without getting tired easily. So one of the interesting facts about the soleus muscle is that the soleus derives very little energy from the stored glycogen in the muscle. So basically the glycogen is the storage house of the glucose in the muscle. So when I'm exercising, the muscle derives the glucose right from the glycogen. However, the soleus doesn't do that. They derive energy from outside. So when I say outside, so basically they're deriving energy from the glucose in the blood and also from the fat stores in our body. And this is also confirmed in this particular study. Yes, the soleus muscle behaves this way. So furthermore, this fact has generated particular interest on whether it can help reduce blood sugar spikes. So before we dive into this study, I want everyone of my audience to understand this key concept here. So did you know that when you're sitting, so basically not doing anything, your body primarily uses fat tissue as a source of energy. So your energy derived from blood glucose while you're sedentary is less than 15%. But let us say you start to move and do some light activities, your body begins to use glucose a little bit more while still relying on the fat tissue as a predominant source of energy. Well, now let us say you're going for a brisk walk or engaging in a moderate intensity exercise. Almost 50% of your energy is going to come from the carbohydrate sources, which is basically the glycogen stored in your muscle and liver and also directly from the blood glucose. So the key concept here is that, so let us say I eat, okay? And then I go to my couch and if I'm sitting right away, the body can actually regulate your blood sugar only by a properly functioning insulin. So let us say you're a diabetic and you have insulin resistance or let us say you have insulin deficiency. Unfortunately, the body cannot use the glucose for energy right away. So which means that your blood sugar is going to spike and it's going to remain high, causing hyperglycemia, which can increase risk for other complications that comes from high blood sugar. So with this background, let's dive into the research, okay? So in this study, there were 15 healthy subjects, okay? But the good thing is that they had varying age and varying fitness levels. And all of them actually had a lot of sedentary time. I think the average was around like eight to 10 hours of sitting time per day. So these subjects, where um, they came into the research area two days. So on the first day, so they take a 75 gram of glucose. So they are drinking the 75 gram of glucose drink, and then they're getting their sugar checked every 15 minutes. So on that particular day, they're not doing anything. So they're just remaining sedentary. So this same protocol was repeated again on a different day. So here again, they come and sit, they take the 75 gram of glucose drink and then they get they, they, they check their blood sugar every 15 minutes for almost up to three hours but during those three hours they're performing this exercise called as a soleus push-up which I'll, which I'll show you at the end of the video but they're basically doing this soleus push-ups exercise continuously for three hours straight so what do the results show right the results show that around the 45 minute mark all the way up to three hours there was difference in between blood sugar readings when you compare those two days. And there was almost a difference of around 20 to 30 milligram per deciliter, which is pretty significant. So while the study is promising, for me, it's almost like a pilot study with just 15 subjects and these subjects were all pretty much healthy. So they were not even diabetic. So I cannot speculate what the results could have been if these were diabetic subjects. That's number one. Number two, think about the practical aspect of this particular exercise. You're seeing a blood sugar difference at the 45th minute mark, or, or you can argue saying that it between 30 to 45 minute mark, but still at the 45 minute mark, and you're maintaining a difference of 20 milligram per deciliter, which is good, and it's lasting for three hours or so. But what I would recommend is that we have a lot of 
clinically proven studies to show that a light activity after a meal, which includes some sort of like me standing or it could be some sort of like a household chores like washing the vessels or cleaning the kitchen or whatsoever, they can have a positive effect on your blood sugar right away and that's also proven, right? So based on the study, I'm not changing my advice to tell my patients, finish eating, go to a couch and then start doing sodium push-ups. No, no, no. I'm still recommending do a light activity after a meal, don't just sit right away. Again, but still, I feel like this could be really uh, motivating or en encouraging for patients who are not able to move right away after a meal. And there could be also a lot of instances in your uh, everyday life, for example, let, let's say you might be traveling somewhere and you may not be able to walk right away. In those instances, the soleus push-ups can be really helpful. The one interesting fact in that particular study was that this particular soleus push-up exercise was able to be performed for almost three hours but just an untrained subject. So basically untrained people with not like an, uh, imp, uh, a great fitness. So which is, which is really good, right? That, that kind of like demonstrates or that kind of like emphasizes that they, the, uh, how, how, I mean, how easy this exercise is, right? So let us say if the patient is unable to move, then I would say, yes, you can do the soleus push-ups and I would recommend doing for 30 minutes to one hour. Now the question is that, can this be really helpful? And the answer is, I cannot say right now because we don't have studies to back up, but at the same time, it's not going to hurt. And anyway, you're creating a muscle contraction. Muscle contraction is always really helpful. We know that muscle contractions creates this glucose uptake into the muscles, which is all good. But again, if you have an opportunity to move, I would, I would recommend you to move rather than doing the soleus push-ups, okay? So, but remember, doing soleus push-ups is not an excuse to skip your medications or overeat. Remember, in this study, they tested 75 gram of carbohydrate, which is not much. To give you an example, one cup of rice has 50 gram of carbohydrates. So now let me show you how to do a soleus push-up. So we're gonna talk about the soleus push-up. So basically, I'm trying to mimic what they did in the study. Although I may not be able to mimic exactly complete because they had a pretty relaxed chair. Um, they had EMGs to make sure that the soleus muscle is contracting more and then making sure that the gas shock is switched off. So we'll try to mimic what they did in the study. So basically, they're resting comfortably, okay? The knees were bent and that's important because let's say when your knees are not bent and if you're going to do a calf raise like that, then you're engaging your gas shock. And the gastroc muscles are not like soleus muscles. So they are type two muscle fibers, which means that they are going to get fatigued. They're going to cause a lot, lot of lactic acid buildup, which can cause pain. So it's important to make sure that your knees are bent. And then the MTP joint, which is basically this joint here, this is going to come below the knees. So basically like this. So if I draw a line like this, right? So the MTP joint is below that knee line. So then they, they're sitting comfortably and they're doing this. Actually, when you start doing this exercise, it doesn't it doesn't feel like you, you know that you're not engaging your gas shock because you don't feel that um, you'll you'll have a different feeling for sure. Compared to when you do this, you'll feel different. Compared to when you do this, you're going to feel the different. And then they're as I said, they are relaxed comfortably, sitting in a chair, and they're doing this for three hours straight. Okay, so which means that on a dining table, if you're going to plan to do on a dining table or so. Yes, you can do it, but you you want to make sure that you're not engaging your gas shock because, I mean, I'm not saying that, I mean, as we talked about in this video, the fact that uh, this helps with blood sugar, that's great, but let's say if you're not engaging the muscle properly, still you're creating contraction of a certain muscle, which is good, but let's say if you want to do this exercise for hours together, like 30 minutes or one hour, then it's, then it's important to make sure that you're engaging the right muscles, otherwise you're going to get fatigued or you're going to have soreness the next day and so forth, okay? So in conclusion, while soleus push-ups can be beneficial in certain situations, still more research is needed. My gut feeling is that the soleus push-ups is still not going to replace our, our um, usual advice of saying perform some sort of light intensity activity for at least 30 minutes or so after a meal Basically, don't just sit on the couch right after me. But again, I'm really interested to see what the future studies are going to entail because this could be really helpful for some of my patients who have comorbidities that, that, that kind of prevents them from moving right away after me. Okay? 
I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post in the comment box below. If you really enjoyed the video, the one request I'm going to ask you is that please click on the like button. And if you're really interested in seeing more of my videos, then make sure that you hit the notification button and the subscribe button. And please post some appreciation, uh, appreciation comments in the comment box below. And I'll see you in my next video. Until then, goodbye.